Okay, hello all. Uh, welcome to this session of ACC Environmental Studies and uh, myself, Dr. Arpan Maithi of Department of Zoology, University of North Bengal is going to uh, deliver a small lecture on the topic ecosystem structures. So if you go through the syllabus, this will be module number three in the syllabus and uh, this will be a short session where I'll give you a briefing what to expect in this particular uh, topic. So the term is ecosystem structures. But before I get started, uh, one should have a uh, precise idea what you mean by the terms ecology and what you mean by the term ecosystem. So we know ecology is a branch of biology which deals with the organisms uh, or the relationships of the organisms to one another and to their physical environment. Whereas ecosystem is a community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. So we can say that an ecosystem is a sub part of ecology. So in this topic of ecosystem uh, structure, what you are going to study will be uh, I mean, I'm not going in depth. What I will do, I'll give you study materials. But right now, I'm guiding through you the entire session. I mean, what to expect in this particular topic. So once you know the difference between ecology and ecosystem, the next uh, topic or thing that one should notice is the types of ecosystem. You are already aware of one is the natural ecosystem. For example, under natural ecosystem, you, uh, we often study terrestrial ecosystem, aquatic ecosystem, that is one part. And the other is the man-made or the artificial ecosystem. For example, croplands, grasslands, they all fall under this category of man-made or artificial ecosystems. So the next point one should, be, uh, one should uh, study is about the different components that one should expect in an ecosystem or an ecosystem structure. So as you might be knowing, it, it can be of, uh, there can be two types of uh, components. One is biotic and the other is abiotic. So by the term biotic, we mean living organisms or living members in an ecosystem that collectively form its community. So it, it is known as biotic community. For example, you can take the case of plants as the producers, animals as the consumers and microorganisms as the decomposers. Uh, on the other side, uh, under abiotic components, where we mainly deal with the non-living components, uh, we usually divide it into two categories. One is the physical components, where we mainly include or focus uh, on uh, energy, climate, uh, the raw materials and the living space uh, of, of any particular biological community that it needs to reside. So one will be the physical components and the other one will be the chemical components. So here you, you can study or you should study the sources of different essential nutrients and along with that the different organic substances for example protein, lipids, carbohydrates etc. that you require. Uh, so these will fall under the term chemical uh, requirements. So before I move into the next portion, uh, one question is often asked, what is the basic function of an ecosystem? So you have ecosystem structure and everything I understand. But what is the main function of an ecosystem? So the answer is the main function of an ecosystem are two. One, to allow flow of energy. That will be the uh, one of the points. And the second important function of ecosystem is it helps in cycling of nutrients. They should be the second point. Now, uh, when we uh, talk about uh, flow of energy, so as you might have already studied, usually uh, we uh, you know the laws of thermodynamics. So these are basically applicable in uh, in uh, energy. I mean in ecosystem energy flow. So in this category, you should know the first law of thermodynamics. That is, it states that usually we state that energy can never be created or destroyed, but it can be converted from one form to another. So this is the the first law of thermodynamics. And the second law states that whenever energy gets transformed or whenever energy is transformed, 
there occurs a loss of energy through the release of heat. So in case of uh, energy flow in, an, in a part any particular ecosystem, we usually observe that yes, there do occur some release of energy. So these things you should take into account. And the next part one should be aware of is, uh, is about the term ecological succession. I am pretty sure you might have heard it before. So for, uh, in an area, so one community may get replaced by another or by a series of communities. So this progressive uh, replacement of one community by the other till the development of a stable community in any particular area, this process or uh, this phenomenon is known as ecological succession. So when you deal with the ecosystem structures, one should be aware of this particular term, the ecological succession. Now there might be different stages of ecological succession. I will give you the details in the reading material. But here I'm just stating the stages. For example, one may be the first, maybe the pioneer community, and the second will be the seral community. So the pioneer community means the first group of organisms who establish their community in a particular area. And this will be followed by the seral stage. Now, the ecological succession can be of different types. It can be, we can divide it into primary succession, we can divide it into secondary succession. So the primary succession, it basically involves the gradual establishment of biotic communities on a lifeless ground. Yes, on a lifeless ground. Whereas the second uh, or the secondary succession, uh, to say, it involves the uh, establishment of uh, biotic communities in an area where some type of biotic community already exists or it already is present. So this basically we divided into these two categories. Now the next term that is very important under this uh, topic ecosystem uh, structures is the food chain. I am pretty sure it's a, it's a very common term. So how to define food chains? So the sequence of eating and, and being eaten in an ecosystem is known as food chain or uh, in terms of, uh, or we can say in other way that the transfer of food energy, if you want to highlight in terms of food energy, transfer of food energy from the plants to a series of organisms is also known as food chain. Now, when we talk about this term food chain, obviously another very important term will come into the picture that is known as food wave. So what does this food, I hope this is, uh, this is also very much, aware, you are all very much aware of this term. You, might, you should have studied uh, in your school actually. So food wave, the interlocking pattern of various food chains in an ecosystem is known as food chain. Plain and simple definition. So in, in a uh, food uh, wave, many food chains are basically interlocked or interconnected. Where different types of organisms are connected at different tropic levels. So that there is a number of opportunities of eating and, and being eaten at each tropic level. So that's the concept about food wave. Now the next uh, topic one should be aware of under this ecosystem structure is that is about the term species diversity. So what does it mean? Species diversity simply means the number or the variety of species in a particular region. Or you can say the number of different species that are represented in a given community. That can also be uh, defined as the species diversity. Now, there can be several factors that can influence the species diversity. For example, speciation. So it's an evolutionary process by which new biological species arise. The next factor, it, it can be extinction. So by the term itself, you, you, can, you can understand what I mean by the term extinction, that is, uh, to become uh, less abundant. Then the third factor might be migration, that is moving of individuals from a species from one place to another. Immigration may be the fourth factor. Emigration, that can be the fifth factor. So uh, these are some of the basic factors. And then not only that, we have also seen species richness. That is the number of species that live in a certain location. That can also influence this. Then one should be aware of the term relative abundance, that is the number of individuals of uh, each species. Or we refer to how common or how rare a species in, in relative to other species. 
So these are some of the factors that greatly influences species diversity. Now, when we talk about uh, species diversity, so there can be different, you can say, types of species, or we can classify endemic species. It can be one way, or paleoendemic, neoendemic. So these are certain terms. I, I will, I have provided the details of these basic terms in my comprehensive study material that I provide to you. Now, there may be different causes of speciation. This is very important, causes of speciation. One may be the geographic isolation. Populations were prevented from interbreeding by geographic uh, isolation. It may happen that rivers might change their course, mountain rise, continental drift can happen, even organisms can migrate. So this can lead to one of the causes of speciation, that is geographic isolation. The second, uh, you can say the second uh, cause of speciation, it's basically reduction of gene flow. So what happens, a population may extend over a broad uh, geographic range and mating throughout the population is, may not be random. So individuals, for example, in the far west would have zero chance of mating with individuals in the far east side of the range. So that will, this will lead to what? This will lead to the reduction of gene flow. So always remember reduction of gene flow and geographic isolation. These two are the major causes of speciation. Then the next term one should be aware of in this uh, particular topic is the term ecotone. I am pretty sure this also uh, this term also be might be known to you or might sound familiar to you. So what is an ecotone? An ecotone is a zone or zone of junction, we say, or a transition area between two diverse ecosystems or two biomes. We, can, we say that way also. So the ecotone is the zone where two communities uh, meet and they integrate. For example, if you take the case of mangrove forests, okay, it represents the ecotone between a marine and a terrestrial ecosystem. So mangrove forest can, can be an ideal example of the term ecotone. The next term one should be aware of is the ecocline. So what is this ecocline? This ecocline is a zone of gradual and continuous change from one ecosystem to the other, where there is no sharp boundary between the two in terms of species composition. So these two terms are very important. One is the first one is ecotone. And the next one I just told you right now, it's the eco-climb. The next term one should be aware in this particular topic is the age, age effect or the age species. What is age effect? The changes in population or the community structures that occur at the boundary of two habitats. So this is known as age effect. And the organisms which occur primarily or most abundantly in this zone are known as age species. So anyway, I will provide the details of this uh, terminology in my, um, in my reading material that I will be providing to you. Now, coming to the last section of my presentation, another term one should be very much aware of is the term ecosystem stability. It has uh, got a direct relationship to the term ecosystem uh, structures. So the vast majority of natural ecosystems, they experience regular environmental changes or disturbances. So most ecologists describe this ecosystem stability as the ability of an organic, of an ecosystem to maintain its structure and function over long or longer periods of time uh, despite disturbances. So this is the basic concept of ecosystem stability. And there are two very important components of ecosystem stability. One is the resistance and the other term is the resilience. An ecosystem displays resistance if uh, if it keeps its structures and continues its normal functions even when environmental conditions change so that is the term resistance or that is the concept of resistance whereas when an, when an ecosystem displays resilience it, if following a for example there occurs a, there have uh, occurred a disturbance so it eventually it will regain or the ecosystem will regain its normal structure and function this regaining property is known as resilience. So you should be very much aware of about these two terms or the difference that exists between the terms resistance and resilience.
Now, I'll just wind off my session with some few terms. For example, one should know what you mean by endangered species and what are the endangered species of plants and animals that are found in India. In fact, I'll provide you or I have, uh, I'll provide you as reading material where you will get the details of these topics. Okay, that's the end. That brings us to the end of this session. Thank you.